Uh, hello, my name is Natalie Krasnov and I am a teacher at Narara Valley High School. Um, I teach year 9 and 10th grade students and I've been teaching big history for three years now. Um, I'm talking about uh, project based learning today in this hot seat video. Uh, I find this strategy really, really useful and um, it's been proven over these past few years of teaching uh, big history that it's very useful for higher ability students and lower ability students so you can use it in a mixed classroom, of which I have. Um, I conduct project based learning activities by scaffolding the task to allow all of these students to achieve. So there's a variety of different activities within the task. Um, most of the tasks are quite small, between about three and five hours worth of work. Uh, it's both done both individually and in groups. Um, if the content is new, uh, it's more complex, quite difficult, I make sure that I teach it to the students first and lay the foundation and then the students go on and complete the project based learning and then start to find out more information for themselves. And so having this foundation means that they don't really get too bogged down. I also make myself available while they're doing these project based learning tasks so that they can come to me and clarify information that they're finding because they're obviously using books and the internet uh, to find new information and you know new websites and then looking at uh, difficult information can be quite daunting for students but it's also enabling them um, to enhance their research skills which is definitely something that's useful for students um, now and in the later years of high school and tertiary studies. Um, the activities that I utilise in these project based learning um, activities can be uh, say flowcharts for example or storyboards which use graphics, uh, these graphics are labelled, uh, a lot of the lower ability students will like these types of uh, visual tasks. For higher ability students it would generally be essays and speeches and presentations which I find really useful and these, these students can extend on those um, or a combination of all the different types of activities. Um, I usually um, will have the, the, the lower ability students completing say the first couple of tasks which are simpler so they're scaffolded from easier to hard and then the extension activities which are completed by the higher ability students. I really want all of the students to get to that higher point but at least if they can, they can complete those more simpler hands on activities or the visual activities then they're still engaging uh, with the work. Um, uh, I also find that buddying students of, of lesser ability with those with greater ability is also helpful in, in group tasks um, and it really aids their learning and helps them to engage and they're also engaging with their peers. Um, some examples of, of where I've used project based learning is um, looking at the changing views of the universe over time. So this was a group task, I, I allocated a particular scientist to students um, within the group, so for example Ptolemy, Bray, Copernicus, Newton, Hubble and uh, the students went off and individually uh, had certain areas assigned to them within the group to research their scientists. They had focus questions that they needed to look at and um, they then came back and presented to, a, 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 to the class chronologically from the earliest views to the most current views. Meanwhile the students who were watching the presentation needed to take notes and they needed to then transform these notes into an essay looking at the changing universe, uh, changing views of the universe over time. And they also needed to plot major events from these particular people that they were studying um, on a timeline. So they had multiple facets of the, all of the information required in different areas. So um, it enabled all of the students to achieve and, um, and really help them to engage with the work. Another example is a biography of, star, of a star, which is one of the tasks that is um, on the Big History website. The students first started out with nuclear fusion. They had to draw a flowchart and draw the pictures of the stages of nuclear fusion. They then um, needed to look at the life cycle of a star. They had to pick uh, images of a star, of various stars, in different phases of their life cycle and then put this into a storyboard and narrate each picture. Um, the next step then was to pick a star um, in our universe. Uh, a common star was easier because there was more uh, information available. They then needed to create a fact sheet on this particular star and look at its luminosity and where it was in, the, in our universe, how far away it was, um, a multitude of different aspects of the particular star. And then the extension um, 
students would then went off and did the same thing as a, a, for a, a galaxy. So they did a biography of a galaxy and um, most of them chose the galaxy that their star was in. So they had a real holistic picture of what a star looked like, how it was formed and where it was in the galaxy and, and scale as well. So it really, um, it really gave them a good, uh, a, a good grounding um, of uh, major aspects within that particular unit. So uh, I hope this was helpful.